This morning, please, to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28. And we're turning to Matthew's Gospel, please, chapter 28. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, please, verse 1. The Word of God reminds us in the beginning of the Sabbath as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, and he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. Outside the town of Lurgan, in County Armagh, there's a big sign that says, Remember the Easter rising. It is still unfinished business. Remember the Easter rising. It is still unfinished business business. I want to come this morning with greater news. Let us remember this morning the Jerusalem Easter raising. Thank God it's finished business. Thank God this morning it finished its business with sin. It finished its business with Satan. It finished its business with death. It finished its business with the grave. A business this morning that no human uprising could ever accomplish as far as we are concerned. But thank God even the Lord Jesus was in human flesh. Even though this morning his human body was laid in the grave, thank God this morning that human body rose again from the grave. Glory to God this morning for the Jerusalem Easter rising. It finished forever with sin, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending His Son, Son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Thank God this morning, Colossians 2 verse 14 says, He took it away by the nailing of it to the cross. Thank God this morning the Jerusalem Easter rising was finished as far as Satan is concerned, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Thank God this morning that the Jerusalem Easter rising has finished sin and finished Satan, but glory to God, it has finished death. 2 Timothy 1 verse 10 says, Who hath abolished death? and brought life and immorality to light through the gospel. The Lord Jesus this morning, who tasted death, the Lord Jesus who trod in the path of death, is the same Lord Jesus who triumphed over death. Thank God this morning, the Jerusalem Easter rising, nobody had to die on that occasion. The only thing that died on the Jerusalem Easter rising was death itself. Death died. When Christ arose, when Christ arose, that was the death of death itself. But glory to God this morning, friend, the Jerusalem's Easter raising not only conquered sin, conquered Satan, conquered death, conquered the grave. Our gospel, or our text this morning is Matthew 28, 
Verse number 5, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Do you remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 17? And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye are yet in your sins, but glory to God this morning. He's alive. Paul says there was in 1 Corinthians 5, sorry, 15, 15, verse 17. It says there, he said, you remember, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You remember the Lord's own personal testimony to the apostle John on the Isle of Patmos. Do you remember Revelation chapter 1, verse 18? He says there, he says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Child of God, this morning we must not fear death. We must not fear the grave. Thank God the one in whom we trust has conquered death. And because the one who, who we trust has conquered the grave, we too will conquer the grave. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That is what the Jerusalem's Easter rising does for the redeemed this morning. That's what it does for us believers this morning. It's the foundation of our faith that Christ gloriously and victoriously arose. In October 1929, there was a missionary convention at the Centre Hall in Westminster in London. Many preachers were taking part. One preacher preached on the text, Luke 23, verse 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. Another preacher got up and he preached on the, on the sufferings of Christ. Isaiah chapter 50, 53 and verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes are we healed. Another preacher, he got up. And he preached on the death of Christ. He preached on the great text of Romans 5 and verse 8. But God commended his love toward us. And that way we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I want you unsaved folk to know that this morning. God loves you. And God loves you so much that he gave his son to die on the cross for you, to save you from your sins, to save you from the fires of hell, to take you to heaven. Listen, God loves you this morning. Christ died for you this morning. Embrace that, please, that you too may live. After the conference was over, many young men were gathered outside, and they were so moved concerning the story of the crucifixion. So many were moved concerning the sufferings of the Lord. So many were, 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 were moved by, by the love of God. One man says that they all greatly moved me. But the one thing is I can't bring myself to believe in a dead Savior, one who died on the cross, one of the young men says, ah, but you missed the last speaker because he completed the story. He told us that he rose again from the dead. You know, listen, child of God, this morning, people talk about preaching the gospel this morning. If you preach the gospel and you don't mention the cross, you haven't preached the gospel. People talk about preaching the gospel today. Listen, if you don't, if you miss the cross, you haven't preached the gospel. But if you stay at the cross, you haven't completed the gospel. Because beyond the cross, there's an empty grave. And beyond the cross, there's a risen Savior. Thank God this morning for the finished work of the cross. Glory to God. But praise God this morning for the empty tomb that, that concludes the gospel story. Jerusalem's Easter raising. They're all talking about the Irish Easter raising. Let us talk this morning about the Jerusalem Easter raising. What does the Jerusalem Easter raising mean? 
What does the Jerusalem's, what does Jerusalem's Easter reading, what does what raising, what does it bring to us? What does it mean to us? I'll tell you what it brings. First of all, it brings peace. Brings peace. Look at my text there in verse 5, please. The angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know ye seek Jesus which was crucified. Oh, friends, can you see these women coming to the grave? Can you see their, how heavy their hearts were, how sorrowful their souls were? Because as far as they were concerned, the Lord Jesus was still in the tomb. As far as they were concerned, the corpse would still have been there. They were going to expect a dead Savior. It seemed to them this morning that death was triumphant. It seemed to them as they approached the tomb that the King of Terrors reigned upon the throne of life itself. Death is the greatest fear Death is the great enemy to those of you this morning who are not saved. You remember this this morning, unsaved friend, you have to die. You could be dead tomorrow. Listen, on my way down the footpath, my mother rang me to tell me of a young man I was at school with. Stevie Moffat, you call him. Him and the wee lad was over yesterday at a football match, and Stevie, he dropped dead at the football match. None of us are guaranteed, I'm telling you now, none of us are guaranteed of tomorrow. We're all facing death. The Lord could come, I know. But for those of us who are saved, if He comes, we are going to go to be with Him in the air. But for those of you that are not saved, you'll be left behind to face unbearable sorrows known as the Great Tribulation. And I'll tell you now, on see a friend, it's not religion you need because religion will put you into hell as quick as drink will. What you need today is the Savior. That's who you need. You need to repent of your sin. You need to trust the Savior. He alone can see it. And you know, this morning, we are told in Romans 5 and 12, it says, and as by one man sin entered the world. You know, friends, this morning, sin... Sin's your cancer. Sin, that's what destroys you tonight, this morning. Sin's what's destroying you. But remember this, the one who died on Calvary's cross died for your sin, but the one who rose that Easter morning rose to be your Savior. I remember being at a workplace one day, and I heard this boy mocking these couple of Christians, and he was saying, you can prove to me in no way that there was ever an Adam. And he argued, how can you prove there was an Adam? And I stood back and it took grace to stand back. And he rattled on and he rattled on and this boy, one of the men says, we have the Bible to prove there is an Adam. There was an Adam. And this boy come back, that's all you have, that's all you have is the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. And I step forward and it says, I have the Belfast Telegraph to prove to me there's an Adam. And I says, the next time you go to the local news agents, buy yourself the Belfast Telegraph and turn you over to the death notices because there it'll prove to you there's an Adam. And it says there in the Scriptures, as in Adam all die. You see, death this morning, death shows sin in its true colors. Every time you attend a funeral, you think that's sin in its true colors. You, every time you see a hearse, that is sin in its true colors. Every time you carry a coffin or see a coffin, listen, that is death, sin in its true color. Hebrews 2 and 9 says, He, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Sinner friend, this morning He tasted death for you. He was made sin for you. And I know sin and death seem to have won the day that morning as they went to the grave, but praise God, the Jerusalem Easter rising brings a different message. 
It brought a message of peace. Fear not ye. That's the peace of the tomb. Ye seek Jesus. That was the person of the tomb. That was crucified. That was the purpose of the tomb. But death could not hold his prey. The Jerusalem's Easter raising, it brought peace. Secondly, it brought prospect because it goes on to say, He is not here. What a message this morning. The Christ that was led in the tomb on Easter Lord's Day morning was the Christ who left the tomb. He left it. Listen, don't you think for one minute that the angel rolled away the stone this morning to let the Savior out? Not at all. The angel rolled the stone away to let the women in. Praise God this morning. He is not here. Friend, this morning, listen. The empty tomb tells us death is no longer present. Death is now absent. The Lord Jesus that was led in the tomb, yes, death was present. But glory to God, death is absent. Christ is conqueror, ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. They came prepared to anoint him. The problem was they hadn't fully understood his work. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 22 and verse 24 and verse 6, they say to him, the, the, these women remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day they rise again. But these women couldn't grasp these words. Child of God, I pray this morning these words grasp you. As these, one, as these women couldn't grasp the promise, how many of God's people today don't grasp the promise, I will come again. How many of God's people today are living and they live through life and they forsake and they know nothing about the soon coming again of the Lord Jesus, the one who came out of the tomb is coming back to the air someday. And all that's going on in our world today is pointing towards that moment is what the Bible teaches. He's coming to the air. The Lord Jesus made the promise, I will come again. And you know, friends, this morning, if you're not saved, that moment, did you know something this morning, dear unsaved friend, that there's going to come a time when millions will disappear, disappear from planet Earth. Every radio station, every television program will be abandoned. News flashes will be appearing everywhere. Where has these millions gone to? You'll be left behind them and no coronation street that night for you. There'll be no match of the day that night. There'll be no Ammerdale for you. It'll be one of what is going on, total chaos. The world in total chaos. And every grave yard well, most graveyards, cemeteries, will have graves that will have been opened, not to let the dead in, but to let the dead in Christ out. You know, child of God, let us grasp the promise this morning. Not only has He arisen, but He is coming again. It brought prospect, didn't it? I know Lazarus was raised from the dead, but Lazarus went back to the dead. I know this morning Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead, but she went back to the dead. I know the, the son of the widow of Nain was raised from the dead. He went back to the dead. Ah, but when Christ was raised, he didn't go back to the dead. He's alive forevermore. Many years ago, many, many years ago, I can't remember the year, in Princess Street in Edinburgh, a well-dressed gentleman was looking into an artist's window. And in the window there was a great painting of Calvary. The crosses were there. The tomb was there. This man stood quietly looking into this picture that told the gospel story in its own way. Stood there engrossed in the scene. And this wee boy come along to him one, uh, just as he looked, and he tugged him on the coat, tail of the coat, and says, Sir, 
a very good man called the Lord Jesus was crucified to that middle cross. Sir, he said, did you know he'd done nobody any harm? He was a good man, sir. And yet they put him to that cross. That man ignored the wee lad's words, but he listened to them. As he continued to stand there, the wee lad tugged at the coattail again and says, Sir, do you realize that the Lord Jesus, when they put him to that cross, he says, he was put to that cross for you. The wee man ignored the wee lad's voice, but he was taking everything in. He near choked when he said that, that it was for him. As he continued to stand looking into the picture, staring into the picture, the coat tail got another wee tug. He says, Sir, do you realize that that good man died on that cross? And the coat tail got another wee tug. And the wee lad says, Sir, do you realize that they put that good man into that tomb? The man was so emotionally affected by what he was watching, but more so by the wee lad. What he said, he walked away. And as he walked away, halfway up the street, the wee hand got a hold of the coat tail again and gave it another tug. He says, I forgot to tell you, sir. He rose from that tomb the third day. No child of God this morning, listen. When the Lord Jesus left the tomb that Lord's Day morning, resurrection morning, Easter raising morning, listen to me, it was never to return. I love what the writer to the Hebrews says. But this man, after he had offered up one sacrifice for sins forever, it doesn't say that he was buried in the tomb. It doesn't say, but when this man, after he'd offered one sacrifice for sinners, was laid in the grave, no, he goes on to say, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sinners, for sin, sat down on the right hand of God. If he's not there this morning, where is he? I'll tell you where he is. He's on the right hand of the Father, and there he's making intercession for us. That's where he is. Out of the tomb onto the throne. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. That's how you come unto God unsafe, friend. Not through any good work, not through any religious act. You must come unto God by him who died for your sin and rose again. There's no other way back to God, friend, only by the Savior. All other roads, no matter how righteous and religious, they lead you to hell. But Christ is the way to heaven. Christ is the way that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Where is he? I'll tell you where he is. At this very moment, he's in heaven preparing me a place. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, he says. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And listen, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. The moment you trust him, he goes to prepare a place for you. And when I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. It brought peace. It brought prospect. It brought power. Look at the text again, verse 6. For he is risen. 
What kind of power is in these words this morning? For he is risen. I'll tell you, it's not human power. It's heavenly power. It's the power of God this morning. Listen to the reader of the Hebrews. Now the God of peace that brought again the dead from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ. There's skeptics and there's critics tell us that the Lord Jesus wasn't fully dead. He was only deeply unconscious. He was only in a deep coma. Let me tell you, he was dead. I would rather listen to the Scriptures than listen to the clown. Oh, no, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, that through the blood of the everlasting covenants. I can tell you, do you see those four words this morning? For he is risen. That is God's signature of satisfaction that the cross was total, perfect, as far as sin was concerned and sacrifice for sin. I want you to know, friend, when the angel said, for he is risen, that was God's signature to say, I'm totally satisfied. There's to be no more sacrifice for sin. No other lamb ever rose from a Jewish altar, but there rose a lamb in Jerusalem. Oh, child of God, let me say this this morning. Do you realize that the power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you and abides in me? Because 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5 says, we are kept by the power of God. The power of God that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that keeps you and keeps me. Listen, praise God this morning. God is not just keeping heaven for us. God keeps us for heaven. You know something this morning? You know what the resurrection of Jesus Christ really does? The resurrection of Jesus Christ validates his sacrifice for sin. The lamb slain rose again. Let's remember what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 4, 25. He who was delivered for our offenses was raised again for our justification. Thank God for the Jerusalem Easter raising. Thank God the lamb arose. It brought peace. It brought prospect. It brought power. It brought proof. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Friend, the tomb's over there for you to go and see for yourself. He's not there. He's away. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. The empty tomb was a place of proof. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Thank God he didn't say, come see the place where the Lord lies. No, no, come and see the place where the Lord lay. Champy this morning. The death bed became divine blessing. Get this this morning. The death bed in that tomb became the divine blessing when he rose again. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future? And life is worth the living just because he lives. I'll tell you this, it brought purpose, didn't it? Go quickly. Tell his disciples that he is risen. Boy, that was the greatest news this world ever heard. 
The greatest news this world ever heard didn't come from a radio or a television. It came from a graveyard. And the good news is today, friend, the purpose is that there's good news today. He is risen. It brings promise. Because it says there, there shall ye see him. Thank God this morning, I shall see him. And one day I shall see him and I shall know him. How will I know him? Because of the print of the nails in his heart. Tell me this, child of God, of God, this morning. Are you glad this morning Christ arose? Because I am. If you're glad, say amen. Yes. He arose forevermore. And sinner friend, he lives to save you, to save you now. May you come to Him, whom to know is to know life eternal. And may the risen Savior who lives in me live in you, and that this peace and this prospect and this power and this proof and this purpose, and this promise can all be yours. Praise God today. The Lamb arose. May that burn within our hearts.